Yes, we're back. It's episode 23, can you believe it, of the Hibs Ramble. Uh, we're back after a couple of weeks hiatus. Um, I'm not too sure we can top the last podcast, but I can try my very hardest. Uh, your host, as not always, Liam Craig's not here tonight, and I'm joined by the lovely and handsome Sean. How the devil are you, my friend? Yeah, I'm great, mate. Glad to be back. Yeah, well, I mean, if... If you've not, if you've not seen, because I mean, you, you probably struggled to have not seen, because he's posted about you know, twenty posts of it. Sean was away in in Lapland the last couple of days, uh, and he's not shut up about it. Um, if you've not already, go check them out. Yeah, I mean, like his post, he's absolutely desperate for attention. <laughs> clearly, uh, but he's no, how, desperate for comments like what you were leaving, eh? So, <laughs> how was your holiday, mate? Did you did you? see Santa Claus or anything? I got, got my photo with a big man, told him what I wanted wow. for Christmas. So. Wow, well, hopefully it was uh, when at Ibrox on Thursday night. Well, that's that's not quite Christmas, eh, so. Nah, early Christmas, eh, early Christmas. But yeah, other than that, you all good? Yeah, good, mate, good. Good. Ready to go. To Glad to hear it, and we can start talking about football again. I mean, obviously, the the talking point this week is, uh, is Hibs Rangers, but we have been treated to a beautiful three weeks of football of the World Cup. Have you been watching any of it? I barely missed any games, to be fair. I really, really enjoyed that. Dedication, man. Yeah. You? That's the beauty of working from home, is you can work, well, work in inverted commas, and then have the games on in the background. It was better when there was a 10 o'clock game, or a 1 o'clock game, 4 o'clock game, and 7 o'clock game. Just gave that you was- reason to move. I thought it was brilliant. That was the days, man. And now we've got one game every two days. I know. Like pain in the hoop. Absolutely brutal. Um, but no, I've I've been enjoying it. I've I've been enjoying watching Argentina for the wee man, uh, wee Leo. Um, and I'm glad that that um, that Jason Cummins was able to share a picture, and that's that's pretty incredible, isn't it? I think it's a bit surreal eh, that he managed to. I mean, he got on the pitch against France, so he was up uh, up against Mbappe. Um, and then obviously managed to run on the pitch and pat with Leo on the back at the end of the Argentina game as well. So that's probably the yeah, fastest yeah. he's moved all tournament. Hi, his whole career, mate. Never mind. Just okay. the but no, it's been it has been a good watch. I thought before the World Cup started, I was like, oh, this is going to be shit because it's in winter. But to be honest, I've actually enjoyed this a lot more than I have a lot of other World Cups that I've seen. Um, I've definitely watched more. Of this tournament than I have of any other international yeah. tournament. I think, I don't I think know. the benefits with obviously like loads of people working from home and still having flexible schedules. Um, loads of people have been really sceptical about the tournament, obviously, because of where it's getting held and stuff like that. But the actual football inside of it has been been brilliant. It's been one of the best tournaments, that's for sure. Loads yeah, of no, I've really, as well. I've really, really enjoyed it. And it has taken my mind off of being a Hibs fan for a few weeks. But We'll be back to Hibs on Thursday. <laughs> Don't know if it's thing or not, but whatever. No, of course not. Um, we head along to Ibrox on Thursday. Sean, are you going? I'm not, no. I had a prior arrangement, so I'll actually be out and I'll still miss the game. <sighs> You're one lucky man. You're one lucky man. Do you know, man. just just touching on, on Ibrox, the last time I went was the 6-1 pumping. And before that, I had been like maybe 10 times, 11 times, and I'd never seen us being beat. And I'd only seen us uh, get one draw, which was the Darren McGregor late header a few years back. On Boxing so, Day. Aye, aye. So after the 6-1, um, no surprise that since that was my first defeat at Ibrox, going as a Hibs fan anyway. You've not been back. Not been back. No, I mean, I think I've actually only seen us win at Ibrox once. I think, I think so. And it was the Lewis Stevenson game. Hmm. Where, yeah, Scott Robertson hand handballed it in our box and yep. we ran up the other end and scored. Now that was that was a good night, but I, th- I think that's the only time I've seen us win there. Like the the other times, I've just I've just not been. Which was, is a shame. Uh, I was coaching at Rangers at the time when when we had that game. I was actually at Murray Park watching the game. Oh, were you? Yeah. You're coaching at Rangers. Mm. 
I never knew that about you. I never knew that you coached Rangers. Yeah, I was at Rangers for a short period. Was that a good time in your career? Did you enjoy it? I actually really enjoyed it. Really enjoyed it there. Oh, come on. Come on, Sean. Less of the pish, eh? Come on, mate. <laughs> right. Less about Sean's uh, mediocre coaching career and more <laughs> on a, uh, <laughs> more on the football. Speaking of mediocre coaching careers, Michael Beale. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Rangers have obviously just changed manager. Mick Beale comes in after about five minutes of having a managerial job at QPR. Um, I thought when they sat Van Bronckhorst, they, they probably needed to go safe. But I think Michael Beale is a little bit too safe for Rangers. Do you think we can take advantage of that or do you think it gives Rangers a leg up considering that he was a number two under a successful Steven Gerrard? In, in what sense would you class it as a safe appointment? Well, he knows the club. Yeah. Um, he probably wouldn't have been... Well, I'm saying, it, it was probably expensive to get him in, but he wouldn't have been ex- as expensive as Van Bronckhorst or Gerrard, probably. Yeah, um, I, think, I, think, I think the appointment, although obviously with his, with his past connections with the club, I think like any management appointment it comes with a bit of a risk um, I think it says a lot about Rangers at the fact that Michael Beale turned down Wolves literally last month and said that he's got unfinished business at QPR, he's just started he's there for a long time and then about two weeks later he's jumping ship and on his way up, up to Ibrox so um, I think we could potentially catch them while they're maybe still Transitioning into Michael Beale's style, I hope so. Um, well, we did it. We did it the last time they changed manager. Yeah, we did. We certainly did. That's probably the last time a lot of Hibs fans were happy. <laughs> exactly. So I don't know. We'll we'll have to wait and see. Um, I think Michael Beale, he's very very highly spoken of throughout football. So it'll be interesting to see what he does with Rangers as a club and the and the team that's there. So, but yeah, hopefully we can capitalise on maybe a, a lucky sharpness. Yeah, I think he was. He is very sorry. He is very highly thought of, and you know that now that he's got the Rangers job. But was he not in the running before Gio, Gio yeah. took charge? And I think so, the only reason they didn't give it to him is because he didn't have, or he hadn't had the experience of being a number one. It was he only hasn't number had two. Two minutes experience. Ah, I know. Now he's had ten games, and then that's it, right? And you come. Yeah, oh, I, I tell you what. It would be typical Hibs to go there and beat Rangers, but it would also be typical Hibs to go there and get absolutely fucking rinsed. I know. So, I mean, the more likely outcome is a 0-0 draw, I would imagine. I'll um, take it. If you offer me a 0-0 draw right now, I'll take it. Exactly. A clean, sheet, a clean sheet and a point is something that we need. So. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I've just been looking at Rangers' last few results. To be honest, I don't really think their last few results really means anything at this moment given that neither team have played in so long. They did however beat um, Leverkusen 3-0 on Saturday which is you know I mean, it's probably a good result. I think Leverkusen have got quite a few players at the World Cup so they're maybe playing their, their reses. I don't know what sort of team Rangers fielded Strong um, side. Strong but side. If, you, if you look at it on paper a 3-0 win against Leverkusen I was it away or was it at home? No, it was at home. It was at Ibrox. It was at Ibrox. Yeah. I mean, if Hibs beat Leverkusen three 0 at Isa Road, yeah, you're laughing. But I mean, we beat Arsenal. I know. Last season, finishing the bottom six. Yeah. So I mean, how much are you going to look into that friendly? To be honest, are you going to look into it that much? I don't know. The Rangers fans will, but that, that's only natural. We would do the same if we beat Leverkusen three 0 Do you know what I mean? So. Ah, uh, that's true. But less about Rangers, more about Hibs. Thankfully, throughout the break, we've got a couple of couple of players back. Nisbet uh, had a wee run out uh, against Middlesbrough, and I think he played against um, Wraith Rovers as well. Yeah. Um, we've got McGeady back. I'm not. I'm not gonna lie. I never watched. You don't know. You, really you don't know. McGeady being back is a good thing or no, mate. So. To be honest, mate, I I I didn't watch either game. I don't even know what the scores were. I know that we won 1-0 against Wraith Rovers. I don't know who scored. Um, Josh, Josh Campbell, how do you not know that? Oh, yes, man. Go on, wee Josh. 
That takes his total up. I'm I'm counting that right, towards the end of the season total. Pele Pele counted for Endley, so why does? <laughs> uh, I mean, Josh Campbell is the goal, isn't he? So he's got to count them. Uh, we got beat against Middlesbrough, didn't we? What was it? Two yeah. one, two 0 Two 0 Two 0 I think Let's I think it was two 0 uh, If we can, we'll talk about that one then. Pish. Um, Megidi back, Nisbet back is a big one though. Um, yeah. Did you watch either of the games? No, the World Cup. <laughs> the World Cup was on. So. <laughs> I watched them instead. I, w- I wanted to watch decent <laughs> football, so right. Okay, let's uh, let's pretend that we watched them and say something like, "Ah, this bit and Kukurevic are going to have a really good partnership." Up I saw um, I saw people moaning about um, McCurdy and this bit. Um, yeah, I, I seen something about that as well. Although I did see people um, praise McCurdy for the game that he had against Middlesbrough. Middlesbrough, yeah, I seen that as well. And now that Boyle's out, is it? Jink, it's time for McCurdy to step up. I think that would be the. I think that would be a natural replacement. Obviously, Yuan's not been involved in much games at all prior to the break. Maybe Johnson's had a change of mind on him, and McCurdy's. I mean, uh, Johnson came out against Kelly and said that he was happy with McCurdy's performance and came on and tried to do it. So, yeah, the the, the Boyle injury might benefit um, someone like Yuan or McCurdy or Melkerson or. Any other attacking well, players? I mean, we've got plenty of them. Um, another one that we mentioned just there was Aidan McGeady. I can't see him being chucked right in as a like-for-like replacement for Boyle. I don't think he's got the legs for it anymore. Um, I'd quite like to see McGeady, you know, playing in that hole in the 10. Yeah. Because um, he's obviously still a very, very creative player. He's, he is a good player. We've not seen much of it. And I think a lot of it was tarred at that game at Falkirk because he was really, really poor, but as were the whole team yeah. against Falkirk. Yeah. Um, I wonder if people are expecting McGeady to come back and put in a performance at Ibrox if he plays, if he comes on as a sub. It would be the perfect place for him to kind of kickstart his Hibs career, wouldn't it? Yeah, I think it would be tough to, to ask. I, I do agree maybe putting him in the 10 because of obviously his age and maybe not being able to move as much. It's a tough injury to come back from. Um, that's probably my main concern. Uh, what was it? What was the injury that he had? He done something... I, can't, I honestly can't remember. Um, we are, but, I tell you what, we are the, the statos today. We are the fact masters. We didn't get fucked I, rem- I remember when he, I remember when he got injured. Um, I'm talking obviously about how damaging it could be and the fact that it was the other side of what he'd already done it on his other leg um, and I'm talking about you know how big an injury it is at that age so that's that's kind of where I'm where I'm taking it from whether it was knee or or ankle um, I think Johnson will probably have learned from the mistake that he made with Nisbet with that being a long injury where after the break he comes out and says that he should have maybe played him. So we might actually see McGeady getting chucked in in games maybe that we wouldn't expect or play longer than we maybe would have expected as well. So it will be interesting to see the line up and especially with the amount of games we've got coming up as well. He might not want to, you know, rupture any of the injuries that some of these players have got that have maybe just came back. Yeah. Do you think though and I'm not for one minute I'm saying um, you know, Johnson's coat's on a sugary peg because I I really don't believe that. But do you think that that Lee Johnson will will feel pressure to 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 play these players who have just come back from injury to try and get them results despite the fact that it might injure them again? Do you think he'll feel that pressure to to put them on to start them? I think he'll feel the pressure to play the players that he, maybe not that he's brought in, but the players that have came in recently that have been injured because he'll want to prove a point. Um, obviously, we don't know what discussions he's had with the board or anything like that. And we obviously, as a podcast, don't think he'll, he should be getting the sack or should get it anytime soon, regardless of how we all think these following six fixtures are going to go. Um, but I, I think there will be a bit of pressure that he'll put on himself to the point where he will want to try and get a wee bit more out of these injured players that have maybe not had the chance to give him what he feels is a, is a good run of games. 
And you would imagine that the likes of Kevin Nisbet and Aidan McGeady will be chomping at the bit to get back into the squad anyway, regardless of what you think about McGeady's work rate. He's a professional footballer. He came here to play games. He wants to play games. Yeah. I don't think the colour of the shirt or the badge on the front of the shirt really matters when it comes to being a pro footballer. You want to play games. Yeah. Um, I think I'm really, really looking forward to seeing this bit coming back. And I have seen a lot of people saying the the longer Nisbet's been out, the better he's got patter. But I I, I don't know. I, I just think I thought Nisbet was such an integral part to the way that we played last season until he got injured going forward, especially with Boyle. And now, you know, I, I think if if he wants to replicate that, I think he's going to need to, you know, win back a lot of fans who, you know, really didn't rate him when he until he got injured. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, I do. I think I think a lot of people are because he's been out for that long and because they've been so poor as a team. I think a lot of those fans that maybe were losing patience with him have now maybe realised just what he did bring to the team and what he did offer. Yeah. Um, and I'm maybe glad that, he, that he's coming back. I, I was one of the people that was saying that I was concerned about how much people were bigging him up and how good they were making him out to be the longer he was out. Um, I think he is a fantastic player, but he needs the right bodies around him as well. He needs a lot of creative talent around him to, to thrive. Yeah. And we've seen that under Sean Maloney because as soon as he was deprived of any creativity and assistance, assistance up top, he he was useless, but that's not his fault. Do you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, exactly. I mean, I think it was it was difficult because you know, Sean Maloney was he's only pissed with the cock that he had. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, a January window, and he wasn't really able to bring in much creativity, and we sold Martin Boyle. So I think um, people were kind of over. Like, what's the word that I'm looking for? They were they were getting a bit too butthurt about Kevin Nisbet not scoring goals. Yeah. But I felt he was still doing his bit for the team. And I think now we're in a much better position to have a Kevin Nisbet playing up top with the players that we've got. I think everyone's looking at it, looking at that squad and going, oh, that's a shite squad. That's We're looking really bleak. I don't think so, Sean, do you? I think, I think, I think a lot of the support think that because of the run that we've been on. Whereas obviously when we're we were not bad on that, players though. I know, I know. I, I'm I'm not saying that they are, but I, there are a there are a lot of players in that squad that we need to move on, and there are a lot of players that aren't good enough to to be at the club, in my opinion. But these same fans that were saying that the squad's rotten and that we need wholesale changes and that the recruitment team needs bend, which it probably is the case, but they weren't saying anything when we were went. Was it four games in a row, unbeaten, clean sheets, right, left, and centre? So it's just about perspective. I think if we if we pick up a decent amount of points in the next five or six games, which I actually don't think we will, but if we do, that perception of, of the squad will change again, and then maybe people won't think we need to make as many changes in January as maybe they thought pre World Cup. Yeah, I mean, see if we get a one-all draw and we score in the last five minutes at Ibrox, then. It's going to be, you know, people are going to look at it and they're like, oh, what a, what a brilliant squad. Lee Johnson's That's really turned it around. Point. I think, yeah, for, for me, the next five or six, between now and the end of January, considering we play Rangers, Celtic and Hearts twice, um, for me, I, I couldn't give a toss about how we play between now and the end of January. The most important thing is, is results. If Lee Johnson scrapes 90th minute winners and equalisers, out of that squad between now and the end of January, we're not going to be talking about how poor the performances were. We're going to be talking about, oh, we got a point at Ibrox, we beat Celtic at home, we knocked Hearts out of the cup, and we we beat them away at, at Tiny at New Year. Do you know? And then it'll just it'll be a good time to look back. Yeah. So it's just at, at the moment, it's it's more about perspective more than anything else. I think. It really is. I think a lot of people have got. I've got it in their minds that we're going to lose every single game from now till the end of January. If not, we if, might, if, we if, might. Yeah, we might. The thing is that the last what was it? Was it ten? Was it ten, eleven games where we like won five and lost five, but we won five and then we lost the this, the five in a row. If that was the other way about, 
and we had lost the games first and then we had won the games, we wouldn't Think be having it. the conversation. Exactly. exactly. We wouldn't be having the conversation that we're having. So again, it's about perspective and hopefully the time on the grass that the squad have had the last couple of weeks has is, is done them the world of good. Yeah. And I don't think I don't think friendly performances is anything to go by. I don't really think friendlies really matter, which is why I, I never watch them. Nothing to do with the fact that it was freezing cold outside or on. they were happening during work hours while the World Cup was on. <laughs> Nothing to do with that. Uh, but going back to Ibrox, I want, I, want, I want you to run me through your lineup. If you're Lee Johnson, you've got uh, you've got your nice coat on, um, you've done your hair, who are you picking for your starting 11? Um Obviously, Marshall, Marshall's in goal. Um, Cadden, I think... I seen I would, a Megwa shout earlier on on Twitter. I would absolutely. I seen a Megwa shout for right back. Ev- everyone here at the Ramble knows that the, the the love that we have for that young man, and the quicker he's in the squad, the better. But I don't think chucking him in at right back or centre half away at Ibrox is maybe the best thing to do. Um, we did it with Porteous. We did. Character, we did. And we had John McGinn at left wing back that day, and Lou Stevenson <laughs> at left centre mid, and we won, which was brilliant. Hello. Um. I think I think Will Fish, uh, Rocky and Porteous would be out my 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 free regardless of what people's thoughts on Porteous is at the moment. At the end, oh of the yeah, day, we've not even spoke about that. At, at, at the end of the day, on his day, he can be one of the best defenders in Scotland. So if he's a fit and available to play, which <clears throat> he's obviously been playing in the friendlies for me, he plays. However, because we should be trying to cash in on him now. I do feel that Will Fish should play as well, so I would like to see a three-five-two, five-three-two, whatever way you want to call it. Uh, Chabria, Cadden at full back, um, and then if Nisbet's good to start, I want him starting. Whether that, whether, uh, but I don't think that'll be with Kukarevic up top because I'm sure he's injured or he's potentially out. Yeah, I've seen um, somewhere that he picked up a knock on international duty. But I think uh, I think a Nisbet and McCurdy front two would would be quite tasty. Um, McCurdy is one million percent bagging a goal at Ibrox if he starts. Um, Lee Johnson has mentioned about trying to play Kevin Nisbet in a deeper role, so I would assume that would either be in the ten or if we're playing two up top, he's playing like a, as, oh, a, nice. as a second, yeah, a second striker kind of thing. Because um, he, he he does link up well when he plays with a. a another body up top so and then just try and maybe pack the midfield would would maybe be my guess I think the the best option for Kevin is but if he's going to play him deeper he needs to play Kukarevic ahead of him yeah for the hold up play and then let Nisbet get in behind yeah or just sign Grant Holt again he can do it he could probably still do a job yeah probably I think that's a solid enough lineup, you know Sean I think yeah, um, you know you look at now the injury to Boyle and it kind of fucks us, to be honest. Let, let's not lie. We've not really spoken about that because I, I completely forgot about it. And then you mentioned it and I was like, oh, fucking hell, Boyle's injured, man. But it, does, uh, it, it does knacker us, but at the same time, a devil's advocate, how good has he actually been since he came back? I know, but he's one of the players that... I know, I know. He's, but... like, he's like our Messi, to be honest, isn't he? Yeah. He's, he's just our talisman. He's, he's the person that we look to to grab us a goal when we need it the person that we look to you know you pass them the ball and hope he, something he, happens he gets he gets the fans excited it's just that I think it kind of deflates the mood of everyone great opportunity that, for someone else though, to step up considering the amount of talent we've got a huge opportunity but um, you know I, I completely forgot that he was injured it, it really has upset me to be honest with you um, and it's I, you know, there's no one that I feel more sorry for, apart from myself, than Martin Boyle, because this is what the third ACL that's ha- that is had at hips, yeah, and it happened just before the World Cup as well. Eh? So yeah, I mean, and I mean, that's... and he would, and he would, he would have been playing. He would, he would have played hundred percent because he's yeah. one of their main men. So, but would they have then became the chief vibes officer? Or well, chief vibes probably, manager? He's probably still that anyway, regardless. Yeah. No. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Um. But yeah, let's let's move on to your prediction for Thursday. Is it bleak or is it optimistic? But well, considering you've just said I've named a good side, um, you can't you can't say a defeat now. 
and, we've, and, and at the start, I said, well, we could maybe catch them, you know, short. But nah, I think 3-0 Rangers. <laughs> I just, I just, I just don't think, um, and obviously I've said it many a time. I hope I'm wrong, um, and rightly so. But I just, I think Rangers will get the bounce from Michael Beal being back in the building, and from what I've heard and saw from the friendlies. Although I don't read too much into them, and considering how I was looking towards the squad and the team pre World Cup. And what was the last game? The last game was Kelly A. It wasn't great. It wasn't great. I don't think Lee Johnson's going to have been able to work miracles between now and then to get us a result at Ibrox. I'd love nothing more than that, but I can't see it. So 3 0, 3 0 Rangers. Well, I'm going with we're sneaking a 2 1. That's not what you were saying before you hit record. No, it wasn't it. <laughs> but I'm, I'm going on record and say we'll sneak a 2 1. Um, McCurdy double. Ah, uh, it's it's it would be typical Hibs. It would be it would be Hibs all over trademark if we were to go there and sneak it and have and do like Celtic against Barcelona have three percent possession. Three percent and complete eight passes. <laughs> Somehow win two one. I would I would love to see it. Um, that is my prediction, and I'm not too sure if I believe it myself, but that's what I'm going with. Two one Hibs. As the two, week one goes Hibs. on, as the week goes on, you'll. Uh... You'll convince yourself. Yeah. Um, I'm going to Ibrox on Thursday as well, so hopefully I come back with you know, a couple of new lighters, a few quid and a pie, or half a pie at least. You'll have a half bottle of Bucky sitting at your feet as well because that'll get thrown at you and maybe a couple oh, of cups probably. of piss. Oh, I love going there. I always come back a few quid richer. It's brilliant, man. Um, right. Less about that. Let's talk about something that's happening next month, Sean. It's the January transfer window. And... Um, you put up a tweet on the Hibs Ramble Twitter today. And then replied to myself like I always do. You did reply to yourself. And uh, I bet you're absolutely fuming that I called you out for that the other day. Yeah, you're, you're, you're always using the Ramble account instead of your own. I, I, no, but I always use the Ramble account. I, it's it's the one that's like on my phone all the time. I'm always liking stuff that, I, like I, that you shouldn't I didn't mean to. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, but you tweeted. With the transfer window fast approaching and there being talk of lots of players being moved on, today we ask, which former Hibs player did it not work out for you that you just wish it had? And you put up a picture of Slivka, James Collins, Victor Palson, and is that Antonio Murray? It is. Yes, it is. That's a good guess from me. I didn't want to make an arse of myself there. I'm glad that I, I got gonna, that right. I was going to um, put Ross Caldwell in there as well because of his goal at Tiny. But he's not a signing, though, is he? I know, I know that's gonna why I didn't, I didn't put him in. Um, there was a couple for the early two thousands I was going to put in. What is it, Martin McIntosh, Kevin Nichols? There's a few other shouts that could have went in there. Ricardo yeah. Vazte as well. Well, that's that's a shout that I had in the group chat, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, we'll we'll go through uh, what we said so far. Mark wants to go on uh, on, on record. record and say that it wasn't a player, but. He wished it worked out for Sean Maloney. I think we all know that Mark's infatuation with Sean Maloney is a very deep connection um, after he went to that Q&A once. I think that's just why he loves him, eh? Because he said that he went there and he came back thinking that we were going to play total football and win the league. <laughs> so fair enough, Mark. Definitely buying into your manager, eh? I know you've said Josh Vela and Tom James I was hoping but, I was hoping to just get a few bites and you came. To right. be honest though, to be honest, Tom James, I thought he was alright. I thought he was okay. Well, Josh Josh Vela came from Bolton, highly rated, and he was linked with like a couple million pounds to Premier League sides before we got him, but obviously they fell through. Yeah. For whatever reason. So he was highly rated at the time. Tom James was also highly rated as well. Um it's just those two boys, especially Josh Vela, sums up how difficult it can be to adapt to Scottish football. Because you could yeah, have thrown, he's, he's you could have thrown yeah, exactly. And I'm not surprised, but you could have also thrown Christian Doidge in there as well if Hibbs hadn't chucked in the towel, you know, a bit earlier. Do you know what I mean? And never persevered with him a wee bit. You could have maybe threw him in there. Yeah. 
No, I mean, I thought Tom James could have been all right for Hibs. I thought he had a bit, but, you know... A right-back who's decent at set-pieces and can ping a ball, like... Do you know what I mean? You see Trent get away with that week in, week out down south. Exactly. I mean, I think Tom James is a little bit better than Trent Alexander-Arnold. Just a little bit. Aye, just a little bit. <laughs> uh, next, next on the list is Owen Fitzpatrick, who has the correct answer. And it is uh, Chris Mueller, the owl man, he's called him. Uh, and I retweeted it and said that it is, he's got taste. So Owen or Owen, I'm not too sure how to pronounce your name. Sorry if I've butchered it. But um, that is the correct answer. And... I'm so glad that someone else apart from me said it. Well, I was, going to, um, I was going to include the owl man in the picture, but I thought that would not give you the opportunity to reply um, from your own account, but then obviously you used the ramble one for that. Mate, we, so, see when we signed him, I went straight online and got the USA shirt with Mueller, <laughs> Mueller 11 on the back. I hadn't even seen him kick a ball. I was already in love with him. Be the best, the money badger. Oh, mate. I'm so gutted. Because <laughs> he's, he's doing so good in the MLS now as well, eh? Just couldn't he, couldn't he hack it, apart from against our broth. Um, Peds Keenan says Danny Swanson. But not for football and reasons. Not for football and reasons. I mean, to be oh, honest, I, did always, I, I didn't really I, care about Danny Swanson. Nah, I always felt the signing of Danny Swanson was a strange one. Obviously, he played for the Hearts. He is a Hibs fan. Um, never really got a look in at all. Um I did feel that there was something else to it, but never really knew anything more than that. Yeah. Uh, Glenn Adams, again, says Chris Mueller. Kieran Townsley, I don't know if this is a bite, but I think I, I'm taking it seriously. He says only two men come to mind and has attached a picture of Dre Wright and James Scott. But I can understand this, though, because see when James Scott signed, I thought, what a sign in that is. Uh, well, he had a good six months at Motherwell and then he left with a good six minutes at, at home to St Johnston or whatever it was for us. Mm-hmm. I mean, he was... I thought... I, I was really hoping that he was going to do well because, mate, seeing his first interview, it just sounded like he'd been a Hibs fan forever. I don't, yeah. I don't know where he's from. I think he's probably from Glasgow, but or out that way. But it sounded like he'd been a Hibs fan forever. And I was like, oh, this boy gets it. He's brilliant. <laughs> And he turns up three stone overweight and can he score a goal? Uh, it was a weird one. Like, it was a weird one. Dre, right? I can I can also see that from a point of view of that he got it, he got it absolutely shining for you know Dre the majority just, of his time at Hibs. Yeah, but, for me, he's just an absolute bang average lower SPL SPFL player, and he's not of Hibs quality. So scored it tiny, but deflected. But yeah, he did the whole bunch. I was also on the day that my daughter was born and I thought it was Chris Mueller that scored. I was watching it in the hospital. Well, he was the one that celebrated it more, didn't he? I know, well, I, well, I celebrated it the most, mate. We were in the hospital and Megan's in labour and I was watching it on my phone. I actually had a ticket to go, but, um, you know, someone decided to go into labour very selfishly. <laughs> but, um, no, I thought it was Chris Mueller that scored and I went absolutely mentally. And I found out it was Dre Wright that scored and I was a little bit disappointed, but still quite happy because we went one up at tiny. And then we got beat 3-1. Uh, but at I've, least... I've, I've, I've wiped that game from my memory, that's for sure. Yeah, at least um, at least my, my daughter was born that day. I mean, that's, that's the only positive that comes for that day. Just. Um, You've also tweeted again. You love tweeting at the Ramble, don't you? Um. So, Dean Brett still to this day wishing Diddy Gat was given a long term deal. I think I don't know if that falls into the category of wish they'd have done better. I know, I know. I just wanted to try and maybe throw a wee curveball in there and see what else we could maybe discuss or just open up the chat because I mean he did miss a sitter on his debut against Hearts and he did only play about four games or something. Um but yeah, we probably I don't I don't know why he was on such a such a short-term deal. It's so strange. It's a bit silly. You wouldn't see that these days. Nah. And then obviously Celtic snapped him up and the rest is history. Yeah. Western Rifleman says David Zatelli. Player. Absolutely. I don't really think that could be filed under the ones that he wished would have done better either. Uh, I think that's maybe just wishing that he maybe was there longer rather than better because he wasn't, he wasn't an overly bad player. Nah. 
Uh, Leon Blues says Slivka was definitely a player in there. Some of the performances off the bench came on and impacted games. Never seemed to do it when he got her on the starts. To be honest, I agree with that. I also replied saying he can't have been at Juventus if he was a bad player. That shout always came out. Yeah. My dad was bad for that one. I can't have been at Juve if he was that bad. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? And then, I mean, I liked Slavka. I just didn't think that he was... He was more I've, than bit I've, part. I've got, a real, I've got a real fondness for him because I was I was at Ibrox when he scored that scored that goal in his debut. So that was enough to put him in my heart. That was zinger as well, man. That was unreal, mate. The throw-in for Lewis Stevenson, the touch, the ball, it was phenomenal. There was no way we were getting beat that day. Eh? Uh, not a chance. And it was always going to be 3-2 or something as well, eh? Back in. Uh, Nathan has attached a picture of Jamie McLaren. I think also that comes in, I think, in his second spell. Which I, th- I, think, yeah, I, second think that, spell. That def- I was thinking about McLaren when I was typing the tweet and I felt that his first spell was that good that you couldn't then file it under that kind of category for a player because he did do really well for us. It's just a yeah. shame he was injured for the second spell. You've got a wee look at Jimmy McLaren about you, eh? I'll take that. With a beard? That's a man. I'm, I'm just always zooming in on right here. I'm always in his DMs. He's got the wee goatee. I, uh, to his, be honest, his, you could... His is much better than mine. You could probably be a pretty convincing Jamie McLaren tribute act. Um, def- I think you could. I definitely not as good a player, that's for sure. Yeah, no, probably not. But, I mean, equally as handsome. Equally as handsome. Yeah. Um, Lewis has said Stevie Mallon. I think that's a good shout. I think it's a even though he won, even though he won Player of the Year in his first season at Hibs, I think I think it is a great show because of how poorly it ended. It's a player that we've needed since he left. It's a player that we've needed. I said that I can't remember if I tweeted it from the Ramble account or my personal account, but I tweeted it ages ago. I think it was was it maybe January or last summer. I think oh it would have, probably would have been last summer when we were all furious about not getting a striker. And I tweeted, um, letting Stevie Mallon go is the worst piece of business that Hibs have done in this transfer window, and I got caned for it. Um, but file that under, yeah, think, yeah, player gets better the longer he's away. Yeah, well, I, I, the thing is, I think because a lot of people wanted him to do a role that he wasn't suited to doing, which was like a deep lying playmaker and break up play, that's not his, that's not his game, eh? Exactly. Uh, HFC team for me says Thomas Agupong. Great song. Aye. I always what remember him for done, that Dundee away. The game, that was yeah. such a good goal as well. I know. I know. That was like I his only contribution. I thought he was all right, you know. He was just one of them that, you know, came up and, and did all right. I yeah. liked him. Uh, just probably purely because of the song. Um, Jem has said Omionga. And I don't really want to get started on Stefan Omionga. Because. I feel like that's a, I feel like that is a controversial one, and that that could cause up a, a debate there, because a lot of people love him, and a lot of people like him as a person, but don't rate him as a player. I like him as a person. I thought he I thought he settled into Hibs really well. He but he but, bought in, he bought into everything you would want a new signing to buy into. Yeah, I just didn't think he was all there as a player, which is a shame because you know you could see that there was, I mean he probably would have grown into. It. A half decent player, but I just it's very, at that it's, time it's I don't think we need this Stephen Bradley situation. Oh, we'll move on to that in a second. Where everyone thinks that he's good enough for Hibs, when in reality he's not, and Livy is probably his level. But yeah. we wish him all, but we wish him all the best, and hope and hope he has a great career. It's one of those. Yeah, exactly. Um, I know we're we're going to wrap up with questions. This has been such a weird podcast, isn't it? Yeah, it's because there's nothing to, there's nothing to look forward to. No, there's and there's nothing to look back on either. There's nothing yeah. to review, nothing to look forward to. Actually, before we go into questions, let's have a wee chat about Ryan Porches. Ryan, Ryan Porches. Mm. Are you surprised? I, I'm not surprised that he's not signing a new deal. I am, however, mm. and I had a bitter reaction. I, I was bitter when I found out the news. I was bitter. But now I've been like, well... What can you do? What's the point in being bitter? I think a lot of people are of the mindset of chuck them in the resis and let them rot. It's an embarrassing state of I affairs. Think, but... I think that's silly. He's not come out and said, 
I hate Hibs. I want to go and play for Hearts. He's just come out and said, I'm no saying it's a new deal because right? I want to go and play somebody else. If you break it down, right, a footballer's career is very, very short, especially, yeah. if, you, especially if you get injuries. Ryan's already had them. I still think he has a niggle and knee injury that's maybe not 100%, very similar to the John Suter situation. Um, it's a very, very short career. He, Yes, we should have given him a bigger contract. Not as big as people are saying, but we should have given him a bigger contract a couple of years ago that you know was relevant to his status at the club at that time. Um, I'm not surprised that he's not signing it because... He's had more than enough opportunities to leave a legacy at Hibs by winning something or doing something with Hibs. Um, and unfortunately, he's found himself in a period where we just couldn't get anything over the line, especially with the Jack Ross side when we were at hand in every second week mm. and then obviously chucking it as well. So Ryan's probably looked at it and thought, well, I've, I've gave it a real good shot. Now I should probably try and move on for the better of my career. And whether that's Italy or the Championship or Rangers or whatever, he's also going to want to pick up as much money as he can because if you look at John Suter, you know, he's made that move to get as much money as possible to make sure his family is right and financially secure because he's got another thing underlying to do with family issues. And that's another reason why he made the move. You just don't know what's going on in Ryan's life where he might need to make that jump to make sure his family's financially secure and stable for yeah. what could be the rest of their life. So I'm not surprised he's not signed it. I'm obviously upset, but players will come and go. So I think that's a really grown up way of looking at it. You know, that I've seen a lot of noise on Twitter when it was announced that he wasn't signing his new deal and the same people that were going Ryan Porteous needs to get out of Scottish football for the good of himself and, you know, because of the media and all that, are the same people who are going, let him rot in the reserves. Uh, don't sell him in January. Let him run his contract down. It's the same people. And uh, I can understand where they're coming from to an extent. Because I was better when I seen that. I was like, oh, fuck him. D- didn't he play him? Yeah. Simple as. But the, the fact of the matter is, now that you take a step back and you look at it from a grown-up point of view and from like a a business point of view, if you were to change jobs and you and you told you, you handed in your notice, you, you would still be expected to do your job. You know what I mean? And the, the difference between that and football is Ryan's still a Hibs fan. Because he's not signing a new deal, that doesn't make him not a Hibs fan. He's still going to play as best as he can. And he's, he's always football. given 100%. Correct. And he's always left it on the... But I don't think there's been maybe a handful of games where you can come away and say that Ryan Poachers hasn't given 110. Because yeah. nine times out of ten he does. He's a model professional. I would imagine that he's... Oh, I mean, so when he's no playing Rangers, he's a model professional. I would imagine that he's someone that... Um, you know, Jack Bryden and... The, the players that play at centre back for the Dev squad look up to um, someone that they can they feel they can emulate, uh, and he's he has given a hell of a lot to Hibs over the last I want to say what five six five six years yeah yeah, yeah. and he's still a young guy and I think that now is probably the time and people forget that he turned down a move to Millwall. A couple of a couple of seasons ago. Yeah, I think I I don't know if you remember, but it was very early on once you made the wise decision to get me on the podcast that we got asked a question um, about Ryan's contract situation and whether we, if he doesn't sign it in January, which was the question that we'd ask, what would we do? And we actually both said that we would we would still keep him and not sell him if it meant a guaranteed European spot. So I think that's probably still the same situation that the club are in. They're probably trying to weigh up, right, What? how much, if if anything, can we get for them? And is it worth cashing in now? And if it and if it's not, what do we need to do to guarantee a European spot for this, this club? Because that's realistically how the club are going to be looking at it. They're going to want Absolutely. to go all out to finish in Europe to then get more money. 
but then they're trying to weigh up, well, how much could we get for Ryan now? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I think it's kind of, you know, what's going to tip the balance sort of thing. Um, I'm happy to, to wish Ryan farewell. I don't, I don't particularly want him to want him to go. That's not what I'm saying at all. I'm happy to to see him go because I think he'll, especially if he goes down south, I think he'll do really well down south. I think I, just, I think I think the Italian league would suit him. The Italian That's league would suit him. Yeah. I just hope to the love of God that he doesn't go to Rangers. And if he does go to Rangers, then I I don't get it. I don't get it. If he does go to Rangers, I don't think he will though. Other other than the financial package, I know. But we'll have to wait and see. We'll all have to wait and see. Well, and we've, it's seen, we've, be... seen, we've seen loads of other players jump ship the Celtic, eh, Celtic and Rangers. I feel like it's different it. though with Porches because of the caning that he gets every time he's played Rangers. Rangers fans hate him. Aye, but if you remember, or you, you might not remember, but when we had Scott Brown, for example, when, when we played, I'm not going to use Kevin Thompson because he wasn't as hated as Scott Brown was, but when we had those two in the midfield, Scott Brown was absolutely hated by the old firm. Both of them. Yeah. And then he went on to obviously join Celtic. So, I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. Yeah, oh well, we will need to wait and see. And uh, oh, it's, just, it's just a bit shite, eh? Because he is such a good player. But it's like it's like when... Um, I, ho- I, I hope he... Sorry to interrupt. I hope he doesn't rush his decision because he can now sign a pre-contract. If we... Unless we're able to cash in on him in January... I hope he doesn't rush into the decision, and then that that rush means that he joins like a, a Rangers or a club down south that he maybe could do better than, like a like a club in the Championship that's maybe fighting for relegation. Like he could do better than that. He's a better player than that. So now that now that realistically he holds all the cards, I really hope he doesn't rush his rush his decision, and I hope he makes the right one because for the ability that he's got or could potentially have. He needs to make this move the right move. Yeah, absolutely. And we'll wrap up on Porches there because, frankly, I don't want to give him any more of time because he's leaving. <laughs> I'm kidding on. Uh, no, we need to wrap up anyway, but we'll go quick fire questions first, Sean. Now it's time to answer the Hibs Ramble listener questions. <clears throat> um, we asked the Ramblers and you replied with your questions. Thanks so much again for getting involved. I know we've had a, a few weeks off. We've had a nice wee break, but um, we're back to it now. And we'll be back every week from now until yep. the end of time, I'm afraid. So you're stuck with us. We asked us to say, we asked you to send us questions, and the first one came from Billy, father of the twins. Um, he says, your thoughts on Stephen Bradley being moved on? I know you touched on it a little bit earlier on. To be honest with you, I do not care. Don't care. He's played, what, four times for Hibs? How old is he? 21, 22? He is not... He's not in his teens. He's not anyway. worth it. He's, you wouldn't go, ah, Ken what? let's put Stephen Bradley in over Eli Yuan. Let's put Stephen Bradley in over Melkerson. You'd, he's not in a conversation. He's, and he's... Ah, he might have done well in the Island League and done all right at what was it Air United he went to? Oh, to be honest, mate, no going to lose sleep over that's it. I know the, that's that. That's the point that people are missing. He's not lit it up anywhere that he's been to the point where it's good enough to justify playing at Hibs. And yes, some of the signings that we've made are also not good enough to play for Hibs. But that's not the point. But you got him. Just because he's not good enough and the signings that we've made aren't good enough doesn't mean that he should then get a chance. Do you know what I mean? The club have made a decision. They feel he's not ready or he's not good enough. We might have a buyback option in the deal. Who knows? I don't know what the deal was. Um, I wish him all the best. Is he good enough at this moment in time to play for the Hibs first team? No, I don't think so. Um, Is he good enough at this time to play for Livingston? I don't even think so. Exactly. Exactly. So... We'll need to time will tell on that one, and probably like a lot of other players that we let go, it'll turn out to be the right call. Yeah. Uh, next one comes from AS. I don't know what your first and second name is, so I will call you AS. He says, if you could field any of the Hibs women on the men's first team, who would it be? Do you know any of the Hibs women, Liam? I know Rachel Boyle. 
I know right. Haaland. She's the goalie. Yeah. Um, I know Siobhan Hunter. Yeah. Um, I, I'm not going to lie. I, I don't really... I don't watch the Hibs. I didn't watch it yesterday. Um, although, Lizzie Arnott scored and I went to school with her. That's a so that's kind of claim to fame. Um, I'll probably be biased on this because I'm obviously going to pick the two girls that I've coached, which would be Ellis Notley and Kirsty Morrison. So... Um, I'm going to say Rachel Boyle to fill in for Martin. My, my, answer, is, my answer is Ellis Notley. Can't speak highly enough. Well, there's a, where does she play? Well, I had her at centre mid and she'd put hers about between centre mid and centre half depending on where the club needs her but she's a cracking centre midfielder. Marvin so Bartley. He, she, is, she is the Marvin Bartley. It's what the first, the first team need. <laughs> so. uh, next one comes from James Kinnebera. And he asks, when will I stop looking forward to Hibs games when I already know it's not good for me? You're in for a lifetime of it, mate, I'm afraid. I guess is probably the right answer there. Find out the day you're going to die and then you'll know. (laughs) (laughs) Um, John McIntosh asks, what did everyone have for lunch? Down the slope won't be happy if I ask the other question. And I'm going to come out here and say, to down the slope. This is a message to down the slope because they've come. They've come at us now a couple of times. I'm not having it. I'm not. I am not having it. Let John ask us whatever he wants, uh, or else. Bullying and tactics. It's also, not welcome in the podcast game. Also, this is a call out for a celebrity boxing match. Sean will fight any of you. <laughs> He'll take on two at once. No bother. Um. I'll tell you what I had for my lunch, John, and I'll also tell you what I had for my dinner because I've t- I've tweeted them back saying I'm going to answer it anyway. I had leftover Domino's for my lunch. I had a pizza for my lunch. Did you? What kind? I had a, it was from Aldi, but it was a spicy um, pepperoni like pizza. It's good, really good. The yeah. ones from Aldi are really. Was it like the posh Aldi one? Yeah, yeah, posh. Yeah, Aldi. they're they're good. good ones, they, they are good. Yeah, they so are good. The ones that aren't well, they're not circle, but they're, they're like oval. Ah, they're good. Ah, and you, I'm you having, need to uh, pay a little bit more. I'm having steak, good steak burgers for dinner. What are you doing? I had um, leftover Domino's, and it was the pepperoni and induja one with the chilies on it. It was really, really very tasty. And um, for dinner, I'm having baked ties. Good charity, Can't yeah. eat them, I'm not yeah. a big guy in ages. Going to have beans and cheese and also tuna. Oh, wow. I've I've recently liked, I've started liking tuna. I'd never tried it up until about three or four months ago. So you started eating your now, cat's food by mistake when you were now I can't. Now I cannot get enough of tuna. I just love tuna. <laughs> Simple as. Uh, <laughs> and our final question today comes from Fattest Prickus. And he he asks, in football, if you were to take a penalty to keep your country in a competition, would you try and hit the ball over the bar or under the bar? You notice how he said in football at the start, because he knows fine well one of us would have then questioned the sport. <laughs> I would probably try and hit under the bar. But... It, depends, it depends who we're playing. Are we playing um, Argentina, Lionel Messi's Argentina in the World Cup final? Because I think I'd maybe sky it, you know? No, you're trying to keep your country in the competition you didn't scare that's match fixing sean that's it's only match going to be it's only match fixing if there's a bet placed on it no oh you surely you'd put a bet on that man surely you imagine the returns scotland to get to the world cup final and miss and, and, and lose on penalties <laughs> <laughs> that is some bet i think i would uh, i think i would probably try and hit under the bar i'd, to certainly, be honest. I'd certainly take a but, better penalty than harry kane and that's a fact would you roll that, roll down at the corner? To Bottom be honest, see, it's quite difficult for Harry Kane because he already went that side. Bottom I left. I wouldn't have gone the same side. No, it's what? difficult. It's also difficult because he plays with Larissa. So he'll know where he goes all the time. The thing is, though, Harry Kane is unfortunately I don't don't like to admit it. He's that good a penalty taker and gets that much power on it. That I'm surprised that he didn't just put his laces. You know, well, he kind of did because he skied it, but. Mm-hmm. Do what he normally does because if he if he hit it in his normal corner, the way that Lloris goes the second time and the way that his first penalty went, it still would have went in because he gets enough power behind it. 
Yeah, no, absolutely. You're absolutely right. We've gone a little bit longer than we said that we would. Um, but it is now time for baked ties, Sean. And you're having your wee, your wee steak burgers. You, you, you buzzing for them? Oh, I'm so excited. I'm Aye. so excited for that. What was the scram like in Lapland? Very expensive for a start. Um, what, what, what is where was it? Finland, you were. Aye, aye, aye. north, north, uh, north of Finland. All right. So went to the, the the most northern McDonald's. Don't know if you've seen that. Oh no, I did see that because I replied yeah, to your story. That, that really that really threw me off, eh? Because I didn't actually. I knew we were north. But I didn't think we were that north. And then see when you're looking at it on the map, like I didn't actually think that the Arctic Circle, which is where we were, is higher. Was it, than, was it really cold in Iceland? How cold was it? Um, well, this week this week is between minus fifteen and minus twenty five, so I'm glad I'm not there this week. Last week it was it was no no colder than minus ten, and it was in the minuses the whole time we were there. But it wasn't because it wasn't windy and it wasn't wet like it is here. You you wouldn't know it was that cold. Like yeah. I was I was nowhere near as cold as I thought I was going to be. I've came home and I've been colder. Believe it or well, not. I mean, it's- bolt out this morning exactly anyway we're going off topic i would just wanted to get out of my system that i'm trying to rinse you on instagram for when you put up the oh look at me i went to the most northern mcdonald's you've just given you've, you've just, get, you've just give my instagram a plug take that uh his instagram name is sean corrigan <laughs> very inventive <laughs> i'm sure there's a i'm sure there's an i at the start you know that or is that my oh, twitter oh that's your twitter is it it's like an old Xbox. You do know. Gamer you do tag. Know. I think that's I think that's why it is, you know that. Because that's kind of created it. But hey. Embarrassing, mate. Embarrassing. Go and go and follow me on all the socials. <laughs> Sean Corrigan, best quick scopes, no scopes of twenty twenty two. Compilation. <laughs> Enjoy folks. <laughs> right. Uh we'll leave you there. I'll leave you with a joke. A man walks into a butcher's and says, Can I get a steak and kiddly pie? Uh the butcher says, You just said kiddly and he went, No I diddly. It's been a pleasure, Sean. I'll tell you, Dad. I'll speak to you next week. <laughs> Bye.